Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about a NAS I've got real mixed feelings about. Today I want to talk about the Mayunda M1S. This tiny little 4 bay M.2 NVMe Intel powered NAS rocks out at $149. That is crazy cheap for an Intel powered 4 bay Nook NAS and with it comes a lot of compromise, I will say. I guess the point I'm making is, at what point when you're trying to save money, does compromise actually really affect you? And when I'm reviewing this, I'm gonna talk about all the things I didn't like, all the things I liked as well, but we have to frame it in that price tag there for what you're getting. Now, uh, rocking out with that N100 CPU, very, very recently refreshed in Q1 2025 uh, with the new Twin Lake version. This Alder Lake CPU, the N100, is a quad core four thread processor there. It also has integrated graphics as well on board. It's great for Plex. We tested it all the way up to 8K in Plex Media Server and with VM deployment, and it's done reasonably well for its rather efficient stature. The system also arrives with support of DDR5, sewed in memory, and again, that 149 price tag has no additional storage, no additional memory, it's not in there. You just get the unit, the CPU already put inside, and you got four bays of M.2 NVMe, a Gen 3 times one each, by the way. We went in with terminal via uh, Unraid to double check that was correct to play with there down the road. Alongside that, there's actually a fifth bay. Inside, there's a 2230 bay as well, which arrives with a 64 gig uh, E2 M2 22. Um, 3.0 small drive there. That 64 gig drive in the case of the unit I've got here had the Windows installation system there. So there is the opportunity, of course, to uh, occupy that bay with another drive if you choose. Keep in mind, of course, it's 2230 and it's very limited in space if you're going to try to use an adapter. The drive that was supplied inside this was a Gen, uh, sorry, uh, a Gen 2 times one drive uh, speed there. So again, that was a five giga transfers times one. I, I tried to find out uh, what the limitations were to the bay, because according to the official documentation I looked online uh, on my under's um, Alibaba page, that listed that that additional bay is also Gen 3 times one. Unfortunately, I don't have a 2230 SSD or an adapter to slot inside and find out. So we have to trust the brand on that PDF there. But nonetheless, we're still coming back to 150 Nika for a four, technically five bay flash system. So let's dig into the M.2 NVMEs inside this system. Um, again, as mentioned, three times one on each of them. So you're looking at a maximum potential eight to 900 megabytes per second throughput on each of the drives. Um, I will say, um, some of you might think this is a small gripe. I don't like that this system doesn't arrive with any thermal pads. It didn't have any thermal pads in the kit. It arrived with a couple of extra feet to go on the base of the drive. It arrived with an instruction manual, no English in there. And it arrived with the external PSU that we'll talk about in a moment, but no thermal pads. Yes, it's times one speed. So there is a question of just how hot they're gonna get and we'll get onto heat later on. But nonetheless, again, that's one of those small areas of compromise or hurdle that shouldn't bother too many people, but I did think it was worth highlighting. Also, space is incredibly thin inside this device. The drives live underneath this panel here, and when we had all four drives inside, the amount of space inside for the thermal pad you're gonna to choose to use is very small. Now, again, there's gonna be the obvious counter argument there that you want the drives to connect via the thermal pads onto the dissipating panel, and you're absolutely right. But what you don't want is thermal pads gelling up the vents, because the afforded space really is quite small. And when we had all four covered in thermal pads, we had to use especially thin ones, because most of the average thermal pads that I have got, because remember, they didn't supply any, when I put them on there, completely gunged up this panel here at the bottom, covering it entirely. So again, there is a distinction between connection with the metal chassis and the over thermal pasting and ruining airflow. All that said, 
the performance numbers that I achieved on the drives inside this were pretty good. Each of the drives reported around 780 to 790 megabytes per second, repeated one gig uh, tests over um, SSH, we're using an Unraid, those are read tests there, so we did 100 one gig test files. Then we did the same with write, it dropped down to 680, 685, which is quite typical, I would say, for the majority of N100 systems I've used, so not too bad there. I will say I was quite impressed with the performance of transferring data between the drives as well. We achieved as low as around 390 up to about 500 megabytes per second transferring data from one SSD to another. So again, all pretty impressive stuff. And also keep in mind, because this has four, technically four and a half, I'm gonna say, M.2 NVMEs inside, you could occupy one of those perhaps with an M.2 to 10 GBE adapter there. Again, you would be limited to about 800 megs, you'd never fully saturate the 10G, but it is an option you have. But if you did that, you wouldn't be able to operate the system with that panel there on the top. Now let's talk about power consumption. When we had the system running with two Windows 11, 11 VMs and active processes on both of the drives, we saw reported numbers of around 28 to 29 watts power utilization. That's pretty impressive for the amount that we were battering for drives and running the CPU way above 50 to 60%. Now, when it came to idle, that was with the array dismounted. In Unraid, we still had a single 2.5 gig connection inside, but the CPU idle, nothing really going on and all the drives just off the array. We got it down to around 12 to 13 watts. So again, pretty nice numbers. I know some of you don't really like uh, seeing idle numbers in the double figures, but again, it's got four M.2s. Even in idle, they're still gonna be sat there. So I was happy with what I saw, and the system arrives with a 60 watt barrel PSU. Would have liked to have seen USB-C. But again, much like I've repeated throughout this video, at this price point, it makes it very hard to overtly criticize when they really have paired things to the bone to keep this as affordable as possible. In terms of ports and connections, I will say they've crammed a lot into this. And again, notwithstanding the price point, I've dealt with a lot of DIY NASs in the last 12, 18 months that have arrived with this CPU that haven't included this many ports and connections. On the front panel, we have three USB 3.2 Gen 2 10 gig connections in type A, and type C. And on the rear of the device, we have not only two more USB 2 ports there, but we also arrive with two times 2.5 gigabit ethernet ports and a display port and a HDMI output there at 4K 60 frames per second. Inside, there's even another USB located inside, which you could use for a compact USB for your Unraid install. This is actually giving quite a lot more than a lot of the N100 NASs that I've talked about on the channel that have arrived at 250, 299, maybe even 350. And given there's an N350, uh, N305 version of this rocking out as well very soon, I've got to say that in terms of connectivity, this device does very well, even if you didn't factor in that price point. However, we got to circle back to some of those compromises within that price point. Number one, and again, this is gonna sound really, really petty, but the installation inside this is just whack. I don't, installing a SODIMM memory slot in this required way too much disassembly. And the way all the components are stacked inside makes it very, very difficult to do a lot of troubleshooting and in terms of DIY and maintenance, uh, DIY, uh, maintenance on this device. You shouldn't be doing that regularly anyway, but I don't like that. Installing, um, uh, you know, upgrades and storing storage media in this, it didn't feel smooth. I get it, 149, compromise, blah, 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 blah. But nonetheless, just be aware to be very delicate if you get one of these for yourself when installing your memory, when installing your drive media, because of the way the component arrangement inside this has been done, it's very easy to disconnect a ribbon cable and speak to anyone who's ever tried to reconnect those with ease it is not smooth. But this leads me to probably my biggest criticism about this device during the course of my reviewing and testing. And that is much like US politics right now, this thing's getting very hot very quickly. What do I mean by that? Well, even when I had the system set up with four drives in idle, booting it for the very first time, just going in to the Windows installation. I hadn't done anything. I hadn't installed anything. I wasn't doing anything. This thing was sat at 44 to 45 degrees. Now that's not outlandishly high, 
but I hadn't done anything on the device. And it was already a, a slightly higher than I would have liked temp. Now keep in mind, that was when the top of this device has an active cooling fan beat uh, on top of the CPU. You can see the vents there at the top, those vents lead into a small laptop style cooling fan that keeps the CPU running cool in this rather compact but metal dissipating chassis there. And it was obviously drawing as much heat as it could, hence why the external chassis was getting warm with our thermal images. And again, shout out again to Hick Micro and that thermal camera they lent us. But I don't like how hot this got. And when I was running some of the performance testing and running the VMs, that got way too warm. It got into the 60s very, very quickly there. Now, that's not necessarily a deal breaker. Obviously, I was stress testing this. I was hitting this quite hard in a way that a number of you might not. But I would not feel comfortable with this device outside of an open air, uh, not in an open air environment. I'd want this in a nice open air environment near a window. I'd like it somewhere cool. I'd like it somewhere where active airflow can keep things running. Because we are talking about four M.2 NVMEs that are faced down with no cooling underneath there. And again, there's the rubber feet you can use, but this will only raise this, I think barely a millimeter, maybe two. So keep that in mind that one of the biggest compromises I could find at this price point, which is still nonetheless impressive, is that in terms of thermal management, this thing has got a lot more work to do. As I mentioned in the introduction, it's incredibly difficult to criticize the device harshly at this price point. I can give you, you know, a public service announcement that if you go for this, keep in mind that it is priced that way for a reason and list all of the things that I found that I did not gel with. But nonetheless, this is giving you a base level experience of a four bay, four and a half bay flash NAS system at 150 that you just can't find anywhere else online. And you'll be paying close to double this price tag for the similar level of hardware elsewhere. And that is the main thing about the M1S. It is designed to be an affordable flash system. Is it perfect? F no. This thing is, you know, barely tipping into the side of good. But once you factor in and look at it in the profile of that price tag, and if you want to cluster a few of these, or you want to use one of these alongside a larger, dumber storage array, so the storage array may be like what that Unraid UNAS thing, and you want to run containers or VMs, or the most compact mobile home Plex Media Server for four and 8K you're gonna need, in that framework, this thing is beyond beautiful. But let me know what you guys think in the comments. The written review should hopefully be finished soon and linked below over on NAS Compares. If you're thinking of buying this device and if you found this video helpful, make sure those two things are true, please use the links in the description to get a hold of one for yourself over on, uh, I believe Amazon, AliExpress and Alibaba will be linked below. Again, make sure those things are true. Don't buy it if you're not happy. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.